anyway, um, <clears throat> so they had about a thousand balloons in the ring because they were going to celebrate the ascension of their CEO as the new whatever. And, and, and basically we're going to call this episode of AEW TV. I couldn't care less. Cause after that pay-per-view, I, I couldn't care less if I were seeing this ever again or not. Right. But out of my duty to the listening public, I'm going to try to see how much I can take. So here comes Mercedes moon and she does the stripper dance, but now she got the belt. So she points at it a lot instead of holding up her hands with the rings. And the, the, as I mentioned about a thousand balloons, but boy, when she got there, there was a lot of hot air in the ring. I'll tell you that. And they did at least these people were willing to work with her, give her a little CEO chant that wasn't that they played the piped in version, but then the people gave her a, a bit of one as well. And she gave in what again is my opinion is a not not genuine beauty pageant speech. It's it's like the and now let's hear from Miss Rhode Island, and yo, I'd like to thank all the people, the little people, whatever the fuck. She's so fake, and it's obviously prepared or written or acted or however you want to phrase it. And every time that the people in the building do react a little bit, she starts doing the little fucking shimmy, the Moni shimmy. It looks like somebody needs to dive into the ring and stick a dollar bill in her garter belt. What I don't is that where she gathers her thoughts, like to figure out what line is next, or what's going on there with that fucking dancing in the middle of the promo. I mean, it's part of her character, but I also think it seems it seems to be some sort of crutch too. She may not be that comfortable out there doing things like this on the mic. She's more comfortable working a match than oh boy speaking as her character. Or if that's not the case, she's just not good at it because. Like you said, she comes across like she's putting on a show, and that really doesn't work. It, it, well, it, but anyway, the video on the screen, fortunately, interrupts her, and there it's Blue Sky on the video screen who reveals that she's the one that jumped Mercedes Monet in the dark a few weeks ago. That we all forgot I, about. That was that like a we month all ago. forgot about. Yeah, it, it was, it. yeah. It was like the second, well, I remember making fun of it when it happened because it was like, the, she's been there two weeks and they just turned the lights off in a fucking locker room pre-tape and somebody beat shit out of her. She has no idea who, right? What a fucking moron. But apparently it was her. It was, it was Blue Sky. And as soon as she says that, then of course Blue Sky is in the ring. How many times have we seen this lately from both companies then you'll see some son of a bitch on the screen, and then they jump the guy in the ring from behind right after they go off the screen. What Did they just figure out they can do it technically, and now they can't stop? This was a Raw segment from several years ago. The whole thing of using uh, the Tron like that, even WWE's kind of getting past that. Well, in, in, in WWE, fairness to them... A lot of times these days, they have people in the way of the Tron. They can't have the Tron, you can see, because they got all the people. All the people. And then here came, as I mentioned, Blue Sky into the ring, and she hit a big move on Mercedes and walked off, and the camera's following Blue Sky backing up, to, you know, so you can see her ha-ha about the whole thing. and gloat and then the camera goes to the ring and there's mercedes moon rubbing a knot on her head and looking up there to, why did you do this to me and it goes on and on and, and here's just a rule of thumb for the people who like to know about the actual wrestling business instead of whatever fucking high school drama they're putting on over there if the baby face gets attacked by a heel and when that heel is leaving, the baby face is still conscious and not being restrained. 
If he ain't chasing that motherfucker, he's just a big fucking pussy. Well, I guess I shouldn't have put the analysis this on that. This is the women's this, division, Jim. This is the women's division. All right, she is just a... She just, she just a, a coward. Limp dick. A she's coward. a limp dick. She's a limp dick. She, that's what she is. Well, it just, no, the baby face. <laughs> you got to lay the baby face out. And then when the save comes, the cavalry comes, you got to get the fuck out of there and, and laugh while you over your shoulder ah, and point a couple times, but you're moving while that baby face is down, or if the baby face comes up, there's somebody to restrain. Oh, no, you want to don't, don't want to do this again? And they can be restrained. But no, what the fuck was, as Bill Watts would say, what did an invisible wall suddenly rise up out of the floor when the baby faces hit the ring to make a big save, the heels bail out and stop on the floor and try to fucking jaw with the people? Chase them and kick the shit out of them. If they goddamn ain't any more scared of you than that to get the fuck out of there, you're leaving the scene of a crime. You have committed a crime, and now you're trying to get away with it without any repercussions. And and that's what a heel does. And not, you know, so, ah, uh, God. Anyway. Who cares what Bill Watts would say? I want to know what Alexandra Pepperday would say. Well, apparently Alexandra Pepperday says everything that Mercedes Moan says, because I guess she writes, you know, when Mercedes gets a phone call, she has to look at old Alexandra Pepperday to find out whether she's supposed to say what, hello, or blow me, or kiss my ass, or what. And the CEO chants, I mean, obviously there are some people that like her, and at various times you do hear them but you don't hear them as loud as you do when they blast them into the music. And when that cuts off, it dies right <laughs> away. Again, I'm not saying there aren't chants at different points, but they're not that loud and vociferous. So then when it goes away, all of a sudden it's like, man, no one's breathing. What happened? Well, what happened is they sucked all the oxygen out of the building. Now this is the, not the go home show, the, the comeback show after the pay-per-view. The, the, the follow-up, if you will, show. They didn't start with anything from Anarchy in the Arena. They didn't start with the MJF, or with MJF on the show at all, but talking about his return. They started with Mercedes Monet. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm willing, willing to be proven wrong. I so seldom am that I'm not experienced at it, but I'm willing. I don't see... I, Unless it's just that they've dropped down to a number that anything would improve, I don't see how Mercedes Monet, in, in the way she's been presented and from what I've seen of her, is going to be a significant ratings boost to this company for, for any measurable time. Maybe there might be, well, I mean, the, we won't be able to tell here. It's the first segment. That's always the highest rated. So, kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, maybe later on with the fucking match, let's see if anybody came back for it. Uh, but uh, from, from uh, any type of long-term basis, you've got MJF and I don't know who, and Osprey, and they've cooled everybody else off and they've seen everybody else to death and, our friendo Cody means nothing because he's in the middle of the reason why a lot of people ain't watching anymore to begin with. So I, so I don't know why they're, Oh, let's start with the celebration for the new women's champion or what is that? One of the, what title did she win? Is that the TBS title or the women's title? And Tony Storm's the women's champion. Yeah. She won the TBS championship, I believe. Okay. Well, see, we see this shit every week. Did you hear Tony said at the press scrum after the pay-per-view that he wants to introduce a mixed tag team championship? Of course he does. I think there ought to be a goddamn an, an interspecies tag team title. Where let, let one of the wrestlers bring his dog and the other wrestler bring his dog and they have a goddamn a, a mixed interspecies tag team match and 
You can't really pin a dog necessarily. Well, I guess you could. But maybe the dog just has to fucking tap out. Harley's good at tapping with her front paws when she wants to go poopy. Should any of the wrestlers who don't have belts sue for the exclusion? Can we find any that don't have belts? <laughs> I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's I some. Bet, I bet you whoever right now doesn't have a belt that they're allowed to carry out on TV, I bet you every single one of them have their own belt that they bought at home. At least one of them. Well, that was uh, the first <laughs> segment. Yeah, it was.